the COVID-19 pandemic has redefined the business landscape around the world. No business was spared as lockdowns were imposed and economic activities ground to a halt. To cope with the effect of the pandemic and to thrive in the new normal, banks have redefined their conventional business models by adapting new platforms, ecosystems, digital payment mechanisms, and data for the future. But in order to remain agile and competitive, banks have to rethink their business models. Some are even considering resorting to excessive risks in order to improve returns. And so, however you look at it, banking is changing, along with the new normal. One of the feasible ways to remain competitive in the new and the next normal is for these banks to have efficiently managed their costs. Typically, banks deal with four micro-foundations in their cost structure, namely payroll, infrastructure, marketing, and office and equipment costs. This becomes more important when banks deviate from conventional banking towards a more innovative, technology-driven business models as banks encounter unforeseen disruptions in operations such as a pandemic. Thus, a comprehensive understanding of cost behavior is vital in achieving efficient cost management. The common assumption is that costs behave in proportion to changes in activity level. However, recent studies have proven that costs behave disproportionately to activity level changes. This is referred to as asymmetric cost behavior, which can either be cost sticky or anti-sticky. We wonder, do banks exhibit this behavior? I am Arnel Onesimo Uy, and together with my team, Lynn Monique Ko, Revan Francis Mansano, and Andrea Hasmin Pila, we are pleased to present our study on asymmetric cost behavior among selected ASEAN five banks, as well as our insight in the new normal. To explain the concept and the theories behind asymmetric cost behavior, I'll hand over the presentation to my teammate, Rivan Mansano. The traditional cost behavior assumes that changes in costs are the same for every 1% change in activity level, regardless if the activity increased or decreased. In 2003, Anderson, Banker, and Janaki Raman, or ABJ in short, pioneered the concept of asymmetric cost behavior for discretionary costs. In particular, they introduced cost stickiness, which implies that the magnitude of the increase in costs associated with an increase in activity driver is greater than the magnitude of the decrease in costs associated with an equivalent decrease in activity. Hence, the movement from activity level Y0 to YL which represents the decrease in activity, has a gentler slope. In 2010, VASE introduced anti-sticky, which is when costs rise less in response to activity increases than they fall when activity decreases equally. The movement from Y0 to YL has a steeper slope, which means that there is a larger decrease in costs. The adapted ABJ equation measures whether changes in activity driver affects the discretionary costs depending on an increase in activity level or a decrease in activity level. If beta 2 has a significant p-value, its sign will imply the cost behavior when the costs are sticky, when the costs are anti-sticky, when the costs are not sticky, they are symmetrical. Beta 1 measures the percentage increase in costs while the combined coefficients of beta 1 and beta 2 measures the percentage decrease in costs. The two main theories behind this are the economic theory of sticky costs and deliberate decision theory. When activity level decreases, slack resources should be removed for XAGT to decrease proportionately. However, this would incur adjustment costs. For example, how much does laying off workers cost? Adjustment costs pertain to retrenchment costs and training costs once activity level increases again. Deliberate decision theory is when managers intervene and decide to retain or remove slack resources instead of letting the costs respond independently to activity level changes. Thanks, Rivan. Now that we have a better understanding of the concept of asymmetrical cost behavior or cost stickiness, we checked if banks in the ASEAN 5 exhibit cost sticky behavior. We hypothesized that a relative magnitude of an increase in administrative and general expenses for an increase in activity level 
measured by loans is equal to the relative decrease in administrative and general expenses for a decrease in activity level. To test this hypothesis, we use financial data from 80 banks from the ASEAN 5 from the year 2007 to 2017, 35 of which are from Indonesia, 8 from Malaysia, 13 from the Philippines, 5 from Singapore, and 19 were from Thailand. We modified Anderson, Banker, and Jenna Kiraman, or ABJ's model, by using average loans as proxy for activity levels in banks instead of the usual revenues. The monetary value of loan portfolio have been used as activity measures for bank in other studies such as those of Berger and Humphrey, Guarda et al, and Wilson and Willock. We used a feasible generalized least square regression estimator to run this model. Several tests were also performed to ensure the integrity of data and the reliability of the results. Preliminary tests include unit truth analysis, tests for serial correlation, multicollinearity, and heteroscedasticity. After all these tests, we run our model, and the results show that ASEAN 5 banks do indeed exhibit cost stickiness, as beta 2 in this particular model is significant at 95% confidence interval. As you can see, for every 1% increase in loans, the bank's administrative and general expenses would increase by 0.2896% as the coefficient of beta 1 shows. On the other hand, for every 1% decrease in loans, the bank's administrative and general expenses would decrease by 0.1731% as the sum of beta 1 and beta 2 would show. The results were consistent with prior studies such as those of Porporato and Werbin. In their study, they concluded that banking industry exhibit cost stickiness in the short term. They assert that managers tend to delay cutting costs after considering the trade-off between the cost of retaining slack resources and adjustment costs of exit and subsequent replacement of those resources. Since banks employ middle to high-skilled labor, bank managers would retain the surplus labor in the short term as training new employees later on would be more costly. We likewise hypothesized what are the effects of prior period changes in activity level to these cost sticky behavior. We propose that changes in loans to customers during prior period affect the degree of cost asymmetry in the current period. We use ABJ's two period model as shown in this slide and we run the same data. Our results show that there is no conclusive asymmetric cost behavior when prior period activity level increased since the beta 2 is insignificant. However, conditional on prior period decreases in loans to customers, banks in ASEAN 5 exhibit asymmetric cost behavior. With a 1% increase in loans, there is a 0.22% increase in administrative and general expenses, but with a 1% decrease in average loans, there is still a 0.049% increase in these expenses. Hence, banks in ASEAN 5 are cost sticky when prior period activity level decreased. This result proves that prior period changes in loans do indeed affect the degree of cost asymmetry in the current period. Despite the prior period decrease in loans, cost stickiness among banks may be due to managers retaining greater slack resources since declines are deemed as temporary during normal periods. The decision to retain slack resources and even spend more leads to a net increase of 0.049% in administrative and general expenses even when loans to customers decreased in the prior period. Again, these findings are consistent with the prediction of Banker and Bizalov when they said that increases in costs are greater after prior period increase in activity. It implies that these resource expansion are affected by managerial decisions which are influenced by the manager's economic outlook. But what about risk? Would the current risk, credit risk for banks, affect the decision to adjust costs with changes in activity level? To test this, we posit that credit risk does not significantly affect the degree of cost stickiness. We expanded ABJ's model to address this by including and using LLP 
or the loan loss provisions as proxies for credit risk. Our results show that credit risk significantly affect the degree of cost asymmetry in ASEAN banks. For every 1% increase in average customer loans, there is a 0.316% increase in administrative and general expenses. But for every 1% decrease in average loans, there is a 0.199% decline in administrative and general expenses, implying that banks with high credit risk tend to be cost sticky. Risk taking firms are cost sticky because they tend to retain resources in response to activity decline. Unlike risk or loss averse managers who are more concerned with avoiding future losses for unfavorable demand realization, risk taking firms would be more concerned with increasing profits than avoiding losses. As a result, they respond quicker to increases in average loans and react slowly to the same decrease in average loans. Hence, banks with high credit risk tend to exhibit cost-sticky behavior. Based on these results, we conclude that indeed ASEAN 5 banks exhibit asymmetric cost behavior. Now, cost stickiness is not necessarily bad. However, bank managers need to be aware of the tendency to be cost sticky. They need to assess whether the sticky behavior present is due to their reasonable optimism on future activity level or whether it is due to inefficiency. When making decisions, managers need to consider the costs between retaining slack resources and incurring adjustment costs such as retrenchment costs and subsequent training costs. In turn, this affects the degree of cost stickiness in banks. And so we hope that through the analysis we provided in our study, bank managers would now have a more comprehensive understanding of cost behavior and realize that sticky costs can be determined and controlled. This brings new angles and perspectives for banks to reinvent their business models, especially with respect to their cost structures in the new and the next normal. Thank you very much for listening to our presentation. And if you have some questions, please feel free to get in touch with us.